good evening uh, to all of you and thank you very much for coming here tonight uh, for Palestine. The issue of Palestine goes back to the past, the conflict in Palestine goes back to the past 60 years. But Palestine and the conflict there did not exist before then in the same way that it does today. The problem is today, yesterday was better than today, and tomorrow is going to be worse than today for people in Palestine. The peace process, which started two decades ago, hasn't achieved much. Palestinians did build their hope in this for a period of time, or many Palestinians did. And instead of the peace process bringing anything, it has just made the situation worse and worse. More settlements, more of everything that the occupation can bring. However, it's important not to get caught in the past 60 to 100 years, and I always make a point of remembering the way it was before then. It's important to remember that for centuries, Muslims, Christians and Jews in this holy land have lived side by side. And have lived side by side as neighbours, they did get on well with each other. It was a wonderful example of coexistence around the world. So it's important to note that, so that when we think of the future, we think that it can come back to something that, as it used to be. However, the situation today didn't start yesterday or the day before. It started back in the UK in 1917, when a British Prime Minister promised the land of Palestine, a land that was called Palestine, to a group of Zionists, and worked with them until Palestine slowly and slowly turned into another country. It continued from there in 1948. My grandfather was kicked out of his own homeland at gunpoint. Him and another Hundreds of thousands of Palestinians were displaced of their own lands in 1948. He lived all his life in a refugee camp, waiting for the day that he'd to return back to his home. And he, until the day he died, he held tight to a key that was a key to his, to his, to his home. And he held tight to the deeds which gave him the right to this land. From then until 1967, there was many people made refugees and from there it only got worse and worse because more people were displaced from their homes and lost their homes. The city which I come from is is a city called Hebron, south of Palestine. It's a city which houses to the three monotheistic faiths, the tomb of Abraham. This city had to change its face from 1967 and it continues to change it until today because of 400 settlers who live inside the city. These 400 settlers, one of them can block, and I've seen with my own eyes, one settler can block the whole of the city centre because he just feels like it. Settlers throw whatever they wish at Palestinians, and there's nets like the nets that you see above you to protect the people who are walking in the street from what the settlers might be throwing at them. The situation is 
one of the worst. And it's not one of the worst because you have shortage of water or you have shortage of food. It's one of the worst because you have occupation. The worst thing that Palestinians have to endure is not lack of food or lack of water or lack of medicine. It's the lack of freedom that you have is the worst thing that anyone can endure. Occupation is one of the worst things that any human being can endure. You can endure having no water, no, no, no food, but when it comes to your own freedom being shackled, it is, it is the worst form of torture that you can impose on anybody. And this applies not to just the Hebronites, but to every Palestinian living in the West Bank or Gaza, or Palestinians who are living in what is called Israel. Palestinians, Arab Palestinians, who have to accept, who are being forced to accept the Jewishness of the state, and they have to give an uh, 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 oath of allegiance to the Zionist state. It's a very difficult circumstance. It's a very difficult time for Palestine. But what's important is, what can we be doing? What can you and I do here in Scotland? The moment we think we cannot do anything, this is when they have won. Every single person is able to do something. And I think this is why we are here today. And why we should be doing it. This occupation has to end. And it's up to you and me when it ends. Israel's days are outnumbered and they will they will end soon but it depends on me and you when they will end it's what we do to make sure that this process works quicker it is what we do towards that for many other conflicts around the world it's what the masses do that hopefully will make a difference and in Palestine it's what we will do that will hopefully end the occupation and bring Palestine back. There is a lot that can be done in people actually going to Palestine. My brother, since he came back and after the massacre and what he saw on the Mavi Marmara, it was life changing for him. But everyone who goes into Palestine, when you come out again, when Israel allows you to get out, in some cases, your life will not be the same again. What you see on the ground will change the way you see the whole world from there. However, many of us are unable to go because of jobs and various other, other commitments. And it's important that we make the difference here. As much as it is important to go there, and make a difference and for my brother Ali he insisted on in going back and now he's on this road to hope, a road convoy waiting until the next flotilla goes in between there is a lot that can be done and I'll talk just very briefly about what Dundee has achieved between the flotilla and now just last week the city council has raised the Palestinian flag over the city chambers. And it will continue to fly it along other twin cities of, of Dundee. This took a lot, of, a lot of pressure on the local politicians and a lot of petitions until this happened. But the other important thing that was achieved is that the Lord Provost in Dundee accepted the call to support the next flotilla and a ship going from Scotland to Gaza. All it, needs, all it needed to get these was 2,500 signatures and few people speaking to their local councillors and this was accepted. The other step that we took and we're still fighting towards is a boycott of Israeli goods in, in, the, in the city. And the city came back and said this could be illegal.
and there is various other negotiations going on to, to make sure that this, this ends. It can happen. It needs us to rise and say to these people, enough is enough. We will not accept this happening in our names. Gunpowder trails back to our footsteps. Unfortunately, by us being silent, we are accepting what goes on. And it's important that this is not done in our name. The situation in Palestine, to finish off, the situation in Palestine on many fronts, whether you want to argue it from a theological point of view, from a political point of view, from a nationalistic point of view, it is a just cause. This is a just cause, and when you look into it, you'll find that what goes on and what Israel gets away with since 1948 has been a bit too much. Israel has been getting away with mass murder, not murder, but mass murder over the past few decades. Displacements of millions of Palestinians, the killing just in the last two, three years, the killing of hundreds of people in the Lebanon, 1,400 people in Gaza last Christmas, the attack on the flotilla, all of this has been building up the case against Israel. So there is no way you can argue for Israel anymore and then that's why Israel employs people to do its dirty work. During the attack on the flotilla you had the IDF, the Israeli Defense Force paying people around the world to work for them on Twitter, on Facebook, on YouTube to make comments to support Israel. There's no Palestinian government to pay people to do this and this is why because it's the just cause we should be standing up and making a difference uh, for Palestine that is if we want to see Palestine free in our times with our eyes and believe you me Palestine will be free inshallah and we will see it with our eyes if we take action so let us work together for a free Palestine free free Palestine